In the initial Genexus course, we briefly covered each of the Genexus elements involved in the implementation of a design system for the application. Among them, we had said that we could not only use in our forms the controls that come in the Genexus toolbox by default, but we could also define user controls, which can be copied from platforms that offer those controls, together with CSS libraries, which are, like our themes, the ones that specify their style, the style of those controls. For example, this one, Semantic UI. We may want to use a card control, such as this one, for example, to show the tourist attractions. Instead of the canvas table we had placed on the horizontal grid, which we had just started to design. There we can see the grid, and here's the canvas table. To do this, it's enough to create a user control object. We can call it the same. Copy and paste the HTML that Semantic UI offers, change this fixed data to something like names of SDT elements to be able to use them dynamically. In other words, to dynamically load that control with data that we'll be able to specify, for example, from the database. With this syntax, which is known as mustache syntax, we are then changing fixed data into variable data. If we go now to the properties, we can see that they're appearing there. We'll also add an event, which is the event that occurs when you click on this HTML component. and we see that it's displayed here. In this way, we'll be able to program the click on that element at runtime. Now what we're going to do is download the CSS, which is the one that really implements the design of all these HTML tags. Here we have it. We download it as a zip file. We'll change the extension to GX library which is the extension required in Genexus to interpret this CSS. Now we're going to insert this CSS as a file. Lastly, we're going to have the card user control take its base style from there. Well, it's as simple as that. We already have the user control to be used in our KV. What we're going to do now is save this component with another name and insert into the grid this card user control. In its properties, we can see displayed all those we changed in a static manner to assign them a value and as we'll see, in a dynamic manner too. We're going to remove everything that we no longer are interested in. We're going to add the country ID attribute because we'll want to send it as a parameter. Attraction ID no longer interests us, and we're going to set country ID as invisible. Okay. What we have to do now is load that user control to the load event with the values of each attraction. So, we program the load event of the grid, and we see that by typing the name of the control, card1, we already have all the properties that we saw before in the user control. To the name property, we're going to assign the value of the attraction name attribute. In the image URL property, we have to indicate the URL where the image we want to load in that card will be found. And it's that of the attraction photo attribute. For the description, 
we see that we've added to the attraction transaction the attraction description attribute, which contains the description of the tourist attraction. We then load that element of the user control with the attribute value. Finally, this is going to be the link. We want the country name value to be loaded, that is to say, to indicate the name of the country. And what we're going to do next is to create a link there, so that country name is a link to the panel we had defined to list the information of the country and its attractions and cities. Therefore, we no longer need the event we had before, which was the one executed when clicking on attraction name, and now we have to program the onClick event of the user control. And what we'll do is invoke the panel that we had, passing it the country ID as a parameter. Finally, we'll make some changes here. We want the component to be loaded with the web component we've just created. And now we run it. And see that the cards are displayed. As well as the view of the country. Here we're viewing four cards per page because we had set that for that size, for the large size. The horizontal grid would show four columns, and if the size was small, it would show two. and three when it was medium. We see that the icon being displayed is a user icon that's not the one we're interested in. We want an icon that reflects the reality of a country. So, we're going to keep this one, the globe icon. The only thing we have to do here is change the class to globe icon because it's specified that way in Semantic UI. Let's try it and see how the icon is coming out. This shows how easy it is to use an external user control. In fact, we could create our own user controls, writing in this way the HTML and providing the corresponding CSS library. To learn more about user controls, we recommend visiting our wiki.